When you hear the words or the phrase, kingdom of God, what comes to mind? In our parable today, as like the parable last week, Jesus talks about the kingdom of God. He wants to give a picture to the disciples of what the kingdom of God looks like. When you hear the words wheat or grain, what comes to mind? When you hear the words tares or weeds, what comes to mind? As Jesus teaches about the kingdom of God, he says there will be no weeds and no more tares in his kingdom. I want you to stay tuned. Find out what's the difference between wheat and weeds in God's kingdom. It's going to be a fantastic lesson. It will change your life. Hello, my name is Reverend Dr. John W. Wilson III, bringing you the Sunday School lesson for this July 23rd, 2023. Thank you for joining me on today. Our title of our lesson is Wheat Among Weeds. It will come from Matthew 13. We'll look at verses 24 through 30 and then 36 through 43. Thank you for joining me on today again. I really appreciate your company. Before we get into it, I would appreciate very much if you hit the like button, subscribe button, uh, hit the share button, leave a comment if you like. i love to hear from you. I want to thank you for those who are leaving comments. They're great encouragement for you, and I love hearing what your thoughts are. So let's get right into this lesson here. We have uh, the first part, like last time, Jesus is talking to the crowds a broad picture, and then we're going to find later that uh, he's going, Jesus is going to leave the crowds with the disciples, go into a home, and then they're going to ask him to explain the parable. And that's where we are right now. But this lesson is interesting. It's like the one last week, and it, it really helps out. Uh, Jesus really blesses us in a tremendous way. He gives the parable, and the interpretation of the parable is not left up to us, but he explains or interprets the parable where it makes it clear what the parable is about. This doesn't happen all the time, but in the last, this parable in last week, he does that. And I, 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 I'm thrilled by it. I'm just thrilled by the simplicity of it, how clear it is, and how clear the message is. So let's get into it. I'm going to kind of read along with it and uh, talk about it. Then we'll get more in detail as Jesus explains it. There's very little needed for interpretation, but there's a lot of application that can be applied to this parable here. So he says here, he put another parable before them, that's the crowd. And he says, the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, may be compared to a man, a farmer, who sold good seed in his field. Now, last time we talked about uh, seed that what did not take to the ground that it fell on. Some was hard, some was rocks, some was choked by the weeds or the, th the, the th thistles or something like that. And then we talked about the one that hit the good soil. Well, this one is sold good seed into its field. So the seed is good. And that means that the seed is going to take root. It's going to do what it's supposed to do. And he sowed the seed into the field, into the ground, and we're assuming that um, everything worked out fine. But while his men were sleeping, okay, the one who actually did the sowing was maybe not the farmer himself, but his servants. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So this farmer and his servants, uh, they sowed good seeds into the field, they have great anticipation on that everything's going to come out right. Uh, the seed is good. The soil is good. And, and the wheat that they planted should come out as wheat. 
But what happened was, the story tells us, while these men were sleeping, the servants, maybe the farmer too, his enemy, he had an enemy, okay, came and sold weeds. Weeds are something that's contrary uh, to the good seed, or contrary to the wheat. So he sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So the enemy came to destroy or to convolute or to uh, do what the 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 the, um, the the man the farmer had planted originally. Okay, he's trying to to distort it. He's trying to confuse it. He's trying to bring chaos to a good situation. He's trying to bring destruction to a good situation. He's trying to deceive, uh, bring deception into the situation here. Okay, so the plant. So when the plants came up and bore again, okay? So wherever it was planted, the wheat and the wheat and the, and the, the weeds, okay? What was probably planted, theologians are saying, or scholars, it was a darnel uh, seed or a type of seed. And that seed is a weed. It's like a, a rye grass, it's a weed. And it is a seed that is black in color, but when it's planted, and as it grows, it looks very similar to wheat. In fact, you really can't tell the difference. You only can tell the difference as it matures and it produces its first ear of wheat. Those little kernels start to come up on the wheat or the weed, then you can really identify what is what. But what happens is, and we'll find out here, is that the wheat entraps or wraps itself around the wheat and then very difficult to separate without damaging the wheat plant. And that's gonna be the issue here, and we'll see it in a minute. So uh, the enemy was very clever in uh, casting out his seeds, his weed seeds, because to the naked eye, you could not tell the difference. And we'll find out here, that will be exactly the case here. So, so when the plants came up and bore grain, the weeds appeared also. Servants noticed that. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? He's saying, Master, you sowed the good seed, but what I'm seeing that's coming up with the good seed is the bad seed, which is which are weeds. How could that have happened when you plant when you planted nothing or we planted nothing but the good seed? And look what the, the, the master says here. He said to them, an enemy has done this. What's the enemy? Somebody who's going against you. You're, you're going this way, he's trying to take you down. Somebody who's jealous. Somebody who wants what you have. Someone who doesn't like you. Someone who wants to bring harm to you. Okay? An enemy has done this. Simple. The master's not caught off by surprise or anything like that. So the servant said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? So they want to go asking if I can go into this field and go take out the wheat, um, excuse me, the weeds, which is among the wheat. And look what the master says. But he said, no, lest in gathering the weeds, you root up the wheat along with them. The harvest has not happened yet. So even as they're maturing as they bring out that ear is coming out those kernels of of wheat and kernels of wheat is coming they can see the difference but the harvest is not ready and because the harvest is not ready the wheat is still the weeds are wrapped around the wheat so if you were to pull the weed you pull the wheat out there'd be no harvest okay so the master says is he says no let's gather in the weeds you root, it said, no less in gathering the weeds, you root up the wheat along with them. This is what he said, words of wisdom. Let them both grow until the harvest. So be patient. This is early on in the process. I want you to be patient until the harvest comes. When the harvest comes, that's when you can pull the wheat up and the weeds and not damage the wheat itself. We're trying to preserve the wheat without damaging it by pulling up the weeds. We don't want the bad weeds or the, the bad seeds or the wheat, the weeds to damage the good seeds or the wheat itself. 
The, remember, the prized possession is the wheat. We're trying to preserve that, okay? He says, let them, um, let both grow together until the harvest, and at the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, okay? So what he's telling them, be patient. I know what's going on. I know the enemy has done what the enemy wants to do, thinks he's going to damage my crop with his bad seeds, but we're going to be patient, and when we're patient, we can be able to tell the difference between the wheat and the weeds fully, and then we'll be able to uproot the weeds without damaging the wheat. And that's what's gonna happen there. He says, um, I will tell the reapers, gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. So at harvest time, he's gonna separate the wheat and the weeds are the wheat and the tares. The tares will be taken up first. And because the tares have no value, they're a bad seed. In fact, that Darnell seed, um, uh, not only does it, it produces a black seed, not only produces wheat, but it produces a poisonous plant. You can't even eat it. That's how bad it is. So that bad seed, that bad crop, those weeds, are going to be bonded them up, and because they are useless, because they serve no purpose, because they are they come from the enemy, they're going to be burned up, okay? And then what's left after the uh, tares or the weeds have been pulled up will be nothing but the wheat, what the good seed produced, and then this farmer says the gatherers will take them and take them into the barn other words, into the house of the farmer to be used. Uh, they're profitable. They're beneficial. That's what he expected. So this is this is a good little story. I like it because it's very practical. It uses uh, really the agriculture or the farming experience to the T. As a farmer, you don't want or you know, as your garden, you don't want weeds in there with the stuff you're trying to get. And so, but also you don't want to start pulling on the weed because you'll uproot your tomatoes or whatever you have and all those kind of things. And you don't want that to happen too. But the best time to do it is when the tomato or the wheat or whatever you're planting, the cucumber or the watermelon, or whatever you're planting, is when it's mature, because then you know you don't have any damage. And then what you simply do, you pull the weeds out, you put them in a pile here, you put them in the trash, then you take your crop, you take them in the house and you enjoy. I love this story. So now he goes to verse 36 to, to 43. And what has happened here, again, I mentioned earlier, the, the disciples have gotten Jesus to himself. He's at a house. He said, explain to me what this means. They, they kind of understand it, but they want to understand it fully. And you remember a parable, uh, and these disciples here are growing in their faith and not fully there yet as ready to go out to the king, to spread the word in God's kingdom. So they're still learning, but they have the, uh, I love it, they have the, uh, the drive or the ambition to understand further what this means. And remember, parables were designed to deceive the wicked and to enlighten the believers. And by their asking questions, gives them a sign, gives us a sign that they are believers, they're on the right track, they're heading in the right direction. They, they are all the ones that this parable was intended for. Remember, I always ask questions. So let's look at it here. Then the crowds, it said, then he left the crowds, Jesus left the crowds and went into the house. I'm assuming he went into the house of his, uh, as last time, his uh, mother and brothers, or if he had sisters there, that house, wherever that house is, he goes in there and his disciples came to him saying, explain to us, the parable of the weeds of the field, okay? Now, Jesus is gonna give us the terminology uh, or what these, uh, what these words mean. He's gonna tell us what, a, what the wheat means. He's gonna tell us what the weeds mean. He's gonna tell us what the field means. He's gonna tell us who the reapers are. He's gonna tell us who the enemy is. He's gonna tell us who that farmer, that master is. He's gonna explain it all. He does it wonderfully. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. So the one who is sowing the good seed in this parable is Jesus Christ, okay? 
Last week, we talked about the good seed was the gospel. But in this situation, the good seed is something different. Let's find out what it is. Okay? The field is the world. So this person is, it says right here, uh, he said he sowed good seeds into its field. So Jesus is saying that the son of man, or Jesus himself, is sowing uh, into the field, good seeds into the field, and the field is the world. They're people, global, okay? It's more than the church, it's the world, entire world, okay? And he says the field is the world, the good seed, look at this, is the sons of the kingdom, those who believe, those who are followers of Jesus, the, the master or Jesus sows them into the world. He puts them out there to share the gospel, to expand, to grow, all right? To expand the gospel. The weeds are the son of the evil one. So we have a contrast. The good seeds are the sons of, of, of the kingdom, those who belong to the kingdom, those who belong to Jesus Christ, those who are saved. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, those who are opposed to the good seeds, those who are rebellious, those who are evil, those who are of the evil one, which is Satan himself. All right? That's the contrast. Weeds are of evil. The wheat is of good seeds, is of the good one, Jesus Christ. He says, and the enemy who sold them is the devil. The, the enemy that came at night, that was Satan, all right? And he came and planted his evil people or the evil ones mixed in with the good ones or with the righteous ones. So now we have a field that has the righteous and the unrighteous, the good uh, that's come from Jesus and the evil ones that come from Satan living amongst each other close quarters. A lot of people believe this is talking about the church. It's, no, it's the field represents the world. Um, Jesus has made no reference to the church at all. You can draw some similarity because in the church itself, there are your weeds and your weeds and your tares. I'll tell you this, I believe in your large churches and some of your smaller churches, most people there are not saved as a whole. You may have a big mega church. I would venture to say 60 to 70 percent of them don't know the Lord. You may go to your smaller churches, maybe uh, 300 churches. I'll say 50 percent. I'm just giving you my estimation. I don't have facts, but I'm giving you my estimate. Most people are not saved, and I can tell you how you know. You just ask them how if you were to die tonight, how would you go to heaven? And you sit back and listen to the responses that you would hear from people who go to church each and every Sunday and see what some will say, I, I don't kill anybody, I don't hurt anybody, I'm good works, I go to church, I sing in the choir. And then you got some people who say, well, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. You, and then you might say, some people might say, well, I don't know. So I would challenge you to do that and you will see what I'm saying is true there, okay? The harvest is the end of the age. The harvest that is coming up will represent the end of this present era. In this present era, you have the good and the bad mixed together. You have the wheat and the tear and the tear mixed together and living amongst each other in this present age. But let me give you a hint, and this will verify this. In the kingdom of heaven, there will be no coexistence of the good and the bad, or the wheat and the tares, or the wheat and the weeds. There will be no coexistence. That's what makes the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God different than this present age. Okay? When harvest time comes, we talked about what would happen. And he's going to explain it here. Okay? He says the harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. At the end of this age, God's going to send his angels, his servants, to come and separate the wheat from the weeds or the wheat from the tares, okay? And the angels are going to only take away to the barn to those who believe and the ones who don't believe, we talked about earlier, they will be put in a bundle and burned. 
They have a di different destination. So it says here, just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. What does that mean to be gathered and burned? That means they'll receive judgment. They'll get their final punishment. They will be in the lake of fire with Satan and all the demons and all the other evil ones there. And they will burn. It will be a consuming fire. They will not be annihilated, meaning they will not disappear. They will be punished on an ongoing basis. Let me give you a little hint. Just like you and I who are believers receive eternal life, those who are not believers receive eternal death. Just like uh, we receive eternal life, we live forever, their death will be forever and ever and ever. We will have a resurrected body. They will not have a resurrected body. We will be free from sin and illnesses and crying and all those things that Revelation 20 talks about. They will not. They will still experience a tremendous amount of misery beyond our imagination and their imagination. And they will, they will be consumed with fire. That means judgment. That means punishment. It's coming that way. And we said it says burn with fire. That's, that's continuously. Okay? So it will be at the end of the age. When, right when the harvest comes, when you're separating the wheat from the tares, the weeds will go and the tares will go one way, the wheat and the grain will go another way, and the outcome is totally different. It says, the Son of Man will send his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and lawbreakers. So when the harvest is coming, look what the angels are going to do. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom. Remember, uh, when this harvest comes, it's a purification process because when you go into the kingdom, there are certain things that cannot go into the kingdom of heaven. There cannot be any illnesses, cannot be any sin, cannot be any evil ones, cannot be anyone who doesn't believe, it, it, can, it cannot be anyone who has no faith. They cannot, any lawbreakers, any rebellious people, they cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. That's why the Son of Man will send his angels. They will gather out of his kingdom all the causes of sin and all the lawbreakers. They will be thrown into the fiery furnace. They will be put in a bundle here, put in the fiery furnace, which we call hell. The bottomless, the fiery pit that will burn forever. In that place, there will be, it will be two types of people in hell. It will be those who are be weeping and those who are gnashing at the teeth. It will be those who sit back and have tremendous amount of regret for how they lived their life and all the opportunities they had to be saved and chose not to be, who chose the world over God. They will be weeping tremendously. And then there will be some who will bring into hell that defiant attitude and they say, God, how could you do this to me? Why could you do this to me? And they will be the ones who will be gnashing at their teeth. Will have the weeping and the gnashing at their teeth in hell forever and ever and ever. It will be an eternal death. It will be an all-consuming, never-ending fire or punishment. Remember, this is God, the kingdom of God. What's it like? Cannot tolerate any type of sin. Cannot tolerate any type of evil. Cannot tolerate any type of lawbreaker. Cannot to tolerate any type of wrongdoing. The only people that are allowed to go into the kingdom of heaven are the righteous, those who have professed Jesus Christ sincerely as their Lord and Savior. Okay? Y'all with me? All right, good. Okay. All right. Then the righteous will shine like the sun. Why will the righteous sign, shine like the sun? Because they've been separated from the evil ones. They've been separated from the weeds. And so when you separate the good from the weeds, and you have the weeds in this pile here and the good seed here, guess what? The good seed or the righteous cannot help but shine, look good in, in response almost to the glory of God. They can't help but shine. When you have gold and you take away all the, the tarnish and all the dullness of it, you shine it up real good, all the impurities are from it, it can't help but shine. When you take a diamond and you uh, it's black and you take all the, the, 
the, the black off, the charcoal off, and you refine it, it cannot help but shine. And that's what's going to happen here. When the wheat is separated from the tares, the wheat cannot help but shine because all the bad stuff that, that's wrapped around it has been taken away. All right? It says, Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who have ears, let him hear. In other words, if you, you know, whoever can hear, let them hear. This is a warning message. This is a message that you need to pay attention to. This is a message that has wisdom, that has eternal consequences. That's what he's saying here. And, I, and, and, and Jesus does a great sign. I was sign, great, excuse me. Jesus does a great way of explaining this where it's crystal clear. One thing I want to say is this. When you have the wheat and the tear, the problem with the church today, we have wheat and tares in them. And it's very difficult to tell in certain stages. But I believe those who are uh, of the good seed can tell. If you're good, those of the good seed know the gospel, they know the word of God. And when they hear something contrary to the word of God, they can, and the Holy Spirit can help them identify it. If you're not growing in the Lord, then you're gonna have a hard time understanding what is of wheat or what is of the evil one, what is of the good one, good seed. Oh, today we have all kind of false doctrines, all kind of false religions. Uh, we have people who believe this, people who believe that. They believe that homosexual marriage is right. They believe in transgender, that's, that's right. They believe in all those things. And so, but the one who's of the good seed knows what's right and wrong. They know what's of the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, there will be no homosexuality. There will be no transgender. We still love them and we still care for them. But in the kingdom of God, it will not happen that way. There will be no lawbreakers, no evil. There will be no murderers. There will be no thieves. None of that kind of stuff. And so uh, it's going to be a different place. But the main thing is that we have to watch out for the evil one. Because the evil one is going to put those uh, bad seeds mixed in with the good seed. And that could be bad theology, a false gospel, a false teaching. It could be a charismatic individual that sounds good, but his words don't line up with this. And we as Christians have got to stay sharp and make sure that we're not deceived and make sure that we are populating this field or this world with the good news of Jesus Christ. We have got to, we've got to do that. And, we, and, and, and what makes Christianity difficult is that there's so many different levels of Christians. The baby Christian, which is fine, but not, don't, stay, don't be a baby Christian too long. Don't become a carnal Christian. Become a growing Christian that has gone beyond milk. Now that's on solid food like the author of Hebrews talks about. Grow and grow and grow. And, and this also tells us that there's going to be a day of reckoning for everyone. There's only two types of people. Those who believe, those who don't. Those who are of the evil one, those who are of, who are of the son of man. There's only two types of people. And there's only two destinations. One is the kingdom of heaven. One is the lake of fire. Hell. There's only two, de two destinations. And this is, it says here, he who has ears, let him hear. This is a warning message that, that we need to evaluate ourselves and make sure we're in right standing with God. We, and we can do that oftentimes how we live our lives, how much time we're spending with God. Have we really asked God to come into our hearts and live and resign? Do we yield to him? You know, uh, I preached a message out of Psalm 73 last Sunday at my church uh, where I, I serve as on staff, and it and what I preached about was ASAP in Psalm 73. He was uh, a director of uh, the choir for David. He was a priest. Uh, he was, I'm not a priest. He was a Levite. Uh, he was uh, a prophet. Uh, he was a man of God. But he started eyeballing. He got distracted when he looked into the world and saw how the Wicked was prospering more, he thought they were, prospering more than the righteous. And that tempted him and it troubled him. He goes to a long, crazy hymn talking about that. And all I want to say is that uh, don't get caught up looking at the world. The world is not better. We already know where they go. We already know what their end is. 
We already know that we are a child of God. We're in the kingdom of heaven, and we're going to receive an inheritance from God. Uh, everything Jesus gets, we get. We're going to live in a place, streets of gold. Uh, no, no more hunger, no more pain, no more sickness, no more illness. We'll be in the presence of God. So don't, don't get caught up with the world doing. Stay on track being who God has called you to be, which is a child of God. And I'll close with this, is that... Uh, one, uh, one bad day of the righteous is better than one good day of the unrighteous. Don't become envious and jealous and jealous of the world that's around us. We are the wheat. That's who the Son of Man is coming back for. That is tremendous. Our future is eternally secure. We have eternal life. We don't have eternal death. Don't get caught up in a world like Demas, who loved the world so much, had the opportunity to be saved, but chose the world. He faked it. For a while, he looked like wheat. But when the petal hit the metal, he was actually a tear. That darnell seed or weed that looks like uh, a wheat for a while, but then when it gets time to harvest, is easily distinguishable. Well, I hope this lesson has helped you in some kind of way. It's blessed me in a tremendous way. Uh, I just love it uh, when Jesus gives a parable and explains it. Uh, we all learn and we're all better for it. God bless you. Love you much. Have a great Sunday. Hope something I said helps you in your Sunday school class. And if you're a teacher, I hope that helps you too. Have a great day.